putting they, they trust you. They trust you to make this a big and a, a, a success. So it's very definitely. symbolic of what AEW is, right? It's, it's a very new company, and you go to New York City, you go to New York, you think, oh, we'll go to MSG. I'm like, no, nah, we're gonna make our own. And Arthur Ashe, it's, it's a great building. They don't have wrestling there ever. They don't really have concerts or anything. It's very rare. It's, it's just tennis. So for AEW to be like, oh, you know what, we're going to take that tennis building, you know, a world famous stadium like that, and make it ours is very symbolic of what AEW stands for, I think. And, that's, and plus, the New York fans are incredible. Telling them that, uh, like you said, you did main event, and we were there for five hours, and the energy never let up. No, I mean when you guys came out, it was still yep. they, they crazy. And that's always a concern, because like, and, and some people don't know that when when dynamite starts, a lot of times the fans have already sat through an hour of dark taping. So you always being the main event is always like, oh, I hope they're not too tired yet. And you can't. I mean, everybody gets tired. We, uh, we're all tired, you know, from doing media and interviews. You can't. It's not. <laughs> that the, the match isn't good or that they're not excited about the wrestlers it's just the fans get tired so just to have that energy throughout the whole night was amazing just too many good wrestlers you yeah know? that's the yeah. problem yeah. it's a good problem to have though right we were talking about first break and what did it mean to you to be the first to win the win that Owen Hart Cup? Because that had to be a big cost. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I just said over there, I've been a part of a lot of the, the history books, and, and my name's on a lot of the pages. First woman signed, first female main event, first uh, Rampage, I did the main event for that in Pittsburgh. But this one just had so much that came along with it um, that, that meant a lot, to, a lot to a lot of people, including myself. But we had you know, the family there, and it's bringing the Owen Hart name, the legacy, back into wrestling where it, it belongs, obviously. He's one of the best in the world, and it's, it's tragic that he was taken away from us. But to be a part of that was so much pressure. That was the most nervous of, to be a first of anything that I ever was. And I I think, I really think that the family was really proud and happy with what we did. And, and of course, a lot of that is with because of Chris Jericho so, um, and Tony Khan working with the family, but I think it's really special that we're going to have that every year now. You're the wrestler, the only wrestler my dad knows from AEW and knows by name because of basketball. Your sponsorship with Chris Jericho will be played for the NBA. And I just want to know, has, has that, have you seen the impact of that? That like just being, you know, the most. I don't know, like you could spot him, like, oh, I know that guy with the glasses with the jeans with the, you know, tuxedo, uh, the Canadian tuxedo. Yeah. Yeah. But, so that's why I love coming to events like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, going to do conventions, meet greets and stuff, because I, you know, you can't read the internet, obviously. It's a bad place now. <laughs> Toxic. But, so you go to the people that actually want to see you, and then I hear of that a lot. And I hear, you know, my significant other, my brother, my sister, they don't watch wrestling. I love wrestling, and I want them to watch with me. And you're the perfect gateway for them to come in. And for me, then I'm like, I'm doing my job. Because I love professional wrestling, obviously, enough that I'm going to wrestle when I have to, but it's like, I think everybody should enjoy that. And I and I, I want everybody to feel inclusive, so I'm a little, a little part of that to make everyone kind of feel together and then come watch it. Like, I'm sure you probably, you know, you, you like it when your dad watches it with you, I'd like to think. Unless he yells too much, I don't know. No, I love, yeah, right. I love it when he brings just specifically you up and he's like, yeah, that guy, you know, puts his hands in his mouth. Like, well, how's he doing? And he's like, oh, great. Like, he's doing great. Man. Good. <laughs> well, if I could, if I could have a little part of that helping you, you know, that's great. I'm into it. Actually, this kind of for the both of you because there's the talk of you know the state of wrestling, the wrestling here, and I feel like you two are a very big part of that, creating something new, creating something fresh. Do you guys kind of feel that as well? Yeah, AEW's got one of the new two on the block. You guys have been. 
you uh, certainly be competitive, if not, if not better. Yeah. Like an argument to be a little better. Do you still yeah. kind of feel like that you, you're Ever paving imagine. the way for yeah. what's going to be next, but also what's next? Yeah, I think just you know being a part of anything that, that's brand new. There's there's ups and downs, and, and there it, it is stressful because you want it to be a part of something successful, not something that's a failure. But now that we've gotten past that, it's like the sigh of relief. Like okay, thank God we're we're doing it. It's working. Now I think what's next for us is we can for. Most people in the world, you know, WWE is the number one wrestling promotion. You can pick out anybody on the street, they know what WWE is. It's not everybody knows what AEW is yet, and I want to get to a point where it is super mainstream, and we do more like entertainment mainstream crossover so that they can, you know, they see one of our stars and like, oh, that person's a wrestler from, from AEW, not just, you know, who is that person? So I think that's what's next for us is just growing massively because we're we're already have we have a successful show we have a great show we have great leadership we have great wrestlers we have a great product let's get more eyes on it because it's so great and we should have more eyes on it i think yes i think we're, we're not the new kid on the block anymore yeah. but um there's always going to be someone in the crowd or watching at home that's never seen it before. and it's important to kind of keep that in your mind and mm -hmm. remind and you know the same the people that have been watching every week you want the new person watching to kind of experience what they did to got that to get them hooked and finding that balance of leaning towards the new person watching and then the people that are watching forever it's it's a it's a weird it's a weird line to, to walk it's also uh, I think I'm speaking for free but she can tell me if that's not it. But I think we we're trying to break the stereotypes of what yeah. a typical professional wrestler in the common person's mind is. For sure. You know, probably like a big, dumb, roided up idiot who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, and I want to shatter that. Um, like, she's an actually a, a dentist. Like, she actually <laughs> flies home early to actually look in people's mouths. Which is insane. Yeah. yeah. And it's like... <laughs> and and she, she's also a phenomenal professional wrestler, and I think that's like whatever that other company is doing is not helping moving wrestling forward. And I think this this place we are, I wouldn't exist. It's very progressive. I feel like we it's not so stereotypical and not you know just staying in the box that wrestling has to be this. We have like. We really have everything on our show. There's, you know, we have Dar someone like Darby Allen, our House of Black. We have Lawrence Cassidy. We have the super technical Brian Danielsons. We have like the names that everybody knows and loves, like Sting, Chris Jericho, CM Punk. There's, you know, we have a, a beautiful women's division. We have something for everybody. It's, it's, and you know. You know, you're welcome. Thank you. I was saying to the picture of the ladies here that I became a big AEW fan during the pandemic because it was one of the only things that was happening. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it must have been so hard for you in that time. It was forming without an audience and everything. But, you know, you got dunked into a giant. I didn't get well, dunked in Well, you didn't get any. dunked. You, like, you know, you were in danger of being He got there. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, how was that whole process for you? of, you know, like, like not having an audience. For both of us, for our own respective, I might be wrong, I think it was really, it came at a horrible time for both of us because I was just, I just turned heel, just getting the swing of things, getting comfortable on the mic, and then, you know, for me, one thing happened, I broke my nose, my leg, I got, you know, I was out, I was out, and for him, he was in a feud with Chris Jericho, and so much of, of who he is, is is being so beloved by the crowd, you know, the kicks, the the chants, everything. And I, I wish more than anything that we could have that that whole period back with with the fans. But then I think another reason of what makes it so special to us is that the fans were still there for us when when we needed them. But they, even though they couldn't be there, they still were watching. They were keeping the ratings up. They were, you know, buying our merch. They it was they were still so supportive of us when we you know we desperately still needed them to be. Yeah, it was a good time for us to, like, I think we all can agree that the pandemic sucks. Yeah. And just to be a part of someone's life for just a couple hours to get just, like, so all this garbage that's going on. And even though, not just the pandemic, but, you know, for your life. Um, but the pandemic especially, I think it was also, it was something new. It was, it was, it was new every week. And I think that's something that, you know, I think they... A lot of people from the industry, which is outside, just don't take 
picked up a brand new thing as well. As a fan, you could watch a brand new thing every single week and to be a part of that and then to beat him twice, you know. Great. <laughs> <laughs> You talked about uh, having the great women's divisions over there. You really held that women's division up during that season, right? Like you were the face of that women's division. So much so, just about a year ago, you had somebody from the other side, you could call your name in the middle of an interview. Um, Which one? Oh, Charlotte, yeah. yeah. Like, that was, you know, the face of that women's division yep. at the time. Now looking back, and, and seeing you know, the, the trail that you blaze and even still with the on art coming like, how do you feel uh, about your not position but more so growth now and where do you see yourself going so I mean there's still a lot of work to be done like personal growth I want to be better at everything I want to be a better wrestler better, better promo everything and, and I want to really be 10 20 years from now, I want to be really remembered as some like somebody's favorite wrestler or somebody's least favorite wrestler or whatever it may be I don't want to just you know fade fade into black and never be thought of again but um, to be a part of this women's division and the growth of it it's it's something I'm really proud of because I, I put so much of like my heart and soul into you know, different pitching ideas and working with Tony and working with Kenny and um, back then even Cody we've had a lot of input and say with women's division but just for, to the point where we've, we've grown now it's, it's surreal because we, when we started out none of us women had much TV time, if, if any. I certainly did not. So we were essentially learning on the fly. So there was everything. You, you saw the growth live on TV. My, my performance center was AW Dynamite. So I think I think in a way that's also why the fans have, have a soft spot for us originals because they, they saw us. They saw us out there you know, when we did not know what we, what we were doing to this point now where, you know, we, I come out with this confidence that I truly have because I feel like I'm, I'm getting the hang of it and you know I want to demand your attention when I come out I don't want you to turn the channel I don't want you to take it off the rig I want your eyes on me the DMD and um, it, it takes it takes a, a lot of work and in practice to, to get that level of confidence but I think eventually our whole women's division is, is really going to be like that. Um, Orange with the Forbidden Door pay-per-view, obviously, yeah, you know, uh, you had a banger, and what was your approach to that, though? That was, you know, there was a lot of questions about, you know, whether the audience knew these wrestlers, or were they influenced enough? Like, Sorry. You know, no, you're okay. Was incredible. I'm so, getting out of your way. <laughs> approach? Or well... I was hurt for a very long time because I had a type 3 AC separation on that shoulder. And it hurt real bad, so I couldn't really wrestle for a while. And then it's like, okay, I'm going to decide to come back and just wrestle real awesome. Um, it's, uh, you know, I knew. I, I tried a little harder than I usually do in that match, especially because I. I don't know. I, I don't need to prove anything to anybody, but I. But it's very. It's satisfying when you can. And do well, I mean, I know I can. Yeah. I just every now and then I like to show everybody, remind everybody what I can do when I feel like it. Um, I have that luxury to just turn on when I want to. Uh, I, I think I'm the only person in wrestling that's had you know like 16 breakout matches <laughs> I get that every single time I have a wrestling match it's like people forgot so I just want to remind everybody who was uh, who Orange Cassidy was and I think that he's able to do that I would have liked to win but he's pretty good Britt you mentioned this on social media so I wanted to bring it up have you seen the new Supreme Series figure yet I just saw it yesterday love it? I love it it's it comes with about 13 pieces or something. It's so incredible. It has my uh, Britsburg merch shirt, which is obviously so special to me. It's the, the gear I wore for Rampage, the first ever Rampage, first ever main event for Rampage in Pittsburgh where I got to defend the title. And I put so much of my heart, soul, blood, sweat, tears into designing that gear because it's very every the, the details for, for the Pittsburgh-ness to it. So to see that it just come to life and, and I couldn't be able to hold it, it's so surreal. It's really, really cool. It's, it's mid- up there for one of my favorite figures. Uh, Orange, there's rumors that Tony Khan loves the uh, fire ants. Will we ever see that in a or is it just elements of you know, here, there? 
Yeah. Have you ever seen yeah. a film? I have no idea what you're talking about. Great. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Britt, obviously your dual career is the most mind-boggling thing here. Okay. But what, uh, what was like the most extreme reaction, maybe from someone in your family, when you were like, oh, I'm also going to you know, wrestle, go to wrestling school? So, ironically enough, I didn't tell my family for like a solid six months when I started training because I was already in, in accepted into dental school at Pittsburgh. It's one of the best in, in the whole nation. So I knew, like I know my family very well. I knew the reaction that was going to come and they were going to be very upset with me. Like, what? Why are you training to be a professional wrestler in a warehouse with strange men when you are guaranteed success as a dentist and you know, obviously they, they getting hurt. What if you get hurt? What if this? So I didn't tell them. And it was actually my cousin in a, in a you know suburb of Pittsburgh saw a flyer, not a not a good one either. It was like Microsoft Paint, horrible flyer with me on it. Um, for it was a wrestling a wrestling uh, flyer and. Of course, all the group chats start coming. Wait, what is this? What is we're doing? So then I had to come clean to my family, and they were not happy at first, not at all. But they've come a long way. They come to all the pay per views now. They're in the front row. They're, my dad is the first one to show anybody. Hey, look at my daughter. She's a Russian wrestler. So it's really cool that I've, I've, I've changed their opinion on the whole thing. Her parents are fans of mine. My parents are obsessed with Orange Cassidy. My mom, his new song is one of my mom's favorite songs of all time. So every time he comes on, I know because I hear my phone buzz six times from my mom. Hey, oh my God, he's on. I love his song. So it's great. Apparently, you're very big with this dad demo. It's, it's, yeah. it's all dads, moms, brothers, sisters. <laughs> what can I say? They love denim. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love good denim?